Albert. Ah, hello to you. Alva Savoy Hill here, speaking through the miracle of the BBC's newfangled talking magic lantern thing. <laughs> and what beautiful bluebells they've given me for my BBC desk here. Excuse me. <laughs> and now here is a special warning to you from the BBC Crime Prevention Department. Ladies, please watch your handbags. The rest of you are stuck with watching this. <laughs> well, here we are again, chums, outside the mighty BBC. And now, at last, I can show you where all your money goes. Hello, telly buddies. Well, it's the last show of the series, and of course, it's a very emotional moment for our audience. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but try and curb the sobs, chums. As I say farewell to the BBC, it's been a very real and meaningful association. I'm going back to the wireless. <laughs> And the BBC is going back to comedy. <laughs> so they, they've treated me like a son. Now they've treated me like a son. They tell me to get out and get a job. <laughs> so with these... <laughs> there, that's all even, isn't it? A bit more off that one? There. And so with these words ringing in my ears, over to this. My mummy says that I could grow up to be just like my dad. I said, does that mean I've got to sleep with the woman next door? <laughs> Coming soon, a story more exciting than a motorway service station individual fruit pie. More enjoyable than an ingrowing bunion. And more gripping than Charlton Eston's truss. It came out of the wardrobe. It was huge. It was horrific. It was hungry. It devoured everything and anything made of wood. Only one man stood a chance of stopping it. That woodworm could be anywhere. <laughs> Galloping gonads! I sense there's something evil and nasty behind that door. Professor, <laughs> do something. I think I already did. <laughs> the only chance for this world, Rhonda, is my secret formula. Will the professor's formula work? Or is his wooden leg going to wind up as a toothpick? See Death Watch 2, starring Warren Beetle in a John Carpenter movie from Pinewood Studios. Coming to a cupboard near you. Next, please. Ah, oh, morning. Hello, Doctor. <clears throat> what on earth is, sir? Uh... It's my dog. He's been a bit off colour lately. 
But there's no dog there. Oh, don't you take your nose though. He didn't mean it. Look, you've upset him now. Of course there's a dog there. If that's a dog, what breed is it? Well, you're the vet. You tell me. <laughs> well, it's obviously not a great name. Could be. <laughs> or perhaps a chihuahua. Maybe. No! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, you've upset him now. Will you examine him? He's getting restless. Yes, yeah, all right. He'll keep you happy. Up on the table, Chris. <laughs> right. That's his mouth. I'm not Robert Hardy, you know. <laughs> well, he's that living now. <laughs> Yes, that seems to be quite normal. Now, I'll have a look at his teeth. <laughs> look, what am I doing? What am I doing? There is no dog. This is ridiculous. It's a bloody stupid situation. Oh, don't swear. You'll offend him. Don't you listen to him, boy. Now, look. There is no dog. Do you understand? There is no dog. Now, will you please stop wasting my time and get out of my surgery? Right, then. I'll go, then. Here I go. Oh, you naughty boy! <laughs> How does he do that? And now, this! Morning, noon, and night. Take care of your teeth. Make them nice and white. Get, get busy and scrub. Join the Smiley Club. Get rid of that moss with some dental floss. Shiny teeth, healthy gums you'll find. Get you noticed at parties by dishy fellas. So take my advice. Then you won't be blue. Take care of your teeth, and they'll take care of you. Hello. There is your trio back once again, flitting around the country, popping into people's parlors, battering their front doors down with a fireman's axe, and asking for all races, colors, and creeds how they react to the prospect of death and a song by Harry Seacom. <laughs> and here I am this week in the sweet little village of leprosy in Dorset, where just ten minutes walk from here, or two hours by British Rail, we can stand amid the rolling bosom of the countryside and watch the farmer tweak its nipules. And we leave all the nasty hurly-burly of life behind by being mangled to death in a threshing machine. It's a village overflowing with heartfelt compassion. This morning, I was talking to Mrs. Drusilla Quinge Thripston, who, in between her tireless work on behalf of headless children, organizes special flag days to raise money for her favorite charity, Guide Dogs for the Dead. <laughs> and what a wonderful boom they are to deceased persons everywhere. And so, for Drusilla and her dogs, a special treat. Here is Vera Lynn singing The White Cliffs of Dover. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of <laughs> Well, that's all for this week. Until I come up your way again. Bye -zy bye everyone. <laughs> Potty training's a doddle. <laughs>
<laughs> Excuse me. You wouldn't have a copy of William Shakespeare's entire complete works, would you? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. yes. Uh, you're a student of Shakespeare, are you? Well, I do have a PhD in Elizabethan drama, yes. Really? Mm -hmm, yes. Is there anything else I can get for you? Yes, please. Um, I'd like a copy of War and Peace. Ah, mm. Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, here we are. Uh, you're yeah. interested in the works of Tolstoy, too? Oh, well, well, I hold a doctorate in Russian literature, actually. <laughs> Astounding. Mm, yes. Also, have you got a copy of Einstein's theories of universal equations? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Oh. Uh, you're not... Uh, you're not... Uh, yes, a doctor of physics, yes. Oh, such learning. Mm. Is there anything else you require? Uh, well, you wouldn't have a copy of... Webster's mm, entire medical dictionary, would you? Yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you've got a doctorate of medicine. No. <laughs> a hernia. <laughs> turned out to be your childhood sweetheart. Did they really all commit suicide on his orders? No, some of them moved to Melbourne. <laughs> G'day, Grandma. Hey, guess what? We just taught John Paul Aussie rules footy. Oh, how did it go? Uh, ref got stung by a jellyfish. Oh. <laughs> Any tucker? Jerk of morning, and dingo's jockstrap. Yeah, I'll just be making some. <laughs> Throwing it down out there like the boys robbing a beer factory. <laughs> Better get this off before I catch me dead. <laughs> oh, well, by the way, this letter came for you, Rayleigh. One of your paintings has won the Paulette surprise. Gee, I have never had for fun. Just think, I could become the next Paul Paris. Nah, don't worry. This other letter says we're all going to lose the use of our arms at any moment due to poison in the water. It's true. <laughs> Dad, there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that, son? Chinese writing. Series. What do you end up with? A silly hat and a daft lish. And a crew that can't pull themselves together. Oh! <laughs> Down the hall on the left. Oh, I don't know. Easy going to pieces. And now this. We're up the creek without mates. Sometimes men just can't help.